Reduce, reuse, recycle. These are the three words that are repeated day in, day out around the world. They're applicable to every single industry, from food to fashion. But what options do we have available to tackle our consumption habits? These are the top 10 inventions that are saving our planet in their own unique way. The Sea Bin Project is a localised effort set up in Australia which, in its infancy, raised over a quarter of a million dollars by crowdfunding alone. It aims to tackle the plastic pollution problem one marina at a time. Every single sea bin is capable of collecting 90,000 plastic bags per year. That's the same as 35,700 disposable cups, 16,500 plastic bottles or 166,500 pieces of plastic cutlery. Globally, the initiative has 860 sea bins in place in at least 50 countries, which collectively capture more than 3.5 tonnes of waste daily. So far, almost 1.5 million tonnes of waste have been caught. From a simple floating bin, the foundation has continued to develop, and its product now features oil-absorbent pads designed to soak up petroleum-based surface oils too. A water pump displaces the water inside the bin, creating a vacuum effect around its rim. This in turn pours water, and with it, waste from up to 10 metres away, filtering 25,000 litres each hour. The company's mission is clear, to create a world in which sea bins are not needed. The fight to remove plastics is taking place across the world, on land and now in water, but to remove them from the chain entirely is the next big step. Many companies have various offerings, but one sustainable method is the use of bioplastics. Rather than relying on petroleum-based resources, bioplastics are made from sugar derivatives. This means things like starch and cellulose. The most common is polylactic acid, or PLA, which comes from fermented corn. The production of these new kinds of plastic emit around a third as much greenhouse gases as conventional plastic manufacturing processes, and the finished product contains no toxins. This means that cornstarch plastics can be composted, and with the price of petroleum on the up and more work being done to mainstream starch-based plastics, the prices are almost comparable. Be sure not to mix these into your recycling bins, though, as this will contaminate the recycling stream and can do more harm than good. It's also worth noting that these materials currently require specialised composting and are not suitable for home composting. The best way to tell is to look for the number 7 on the base of your cup, followed by the letters PLA. Next up is Notpla. April 2017 saw the company raise £850,000 in a crowdfunding activity backed by over 900 investors. Today, the initiative is making some of the most environmentally friendly plastic packaging alternatives on the market. Made primarily from brown seaweed, which they say grows up to one metre every single day, it is entirely compostable. One of the key benefits is that it biodegrades in a little over a month, so it doesn't need to go to a special composting facility like PLA. Depending on its use, consumers are even free to eat it, just as is the case with its Uho capsules. The company pioneered these at the London Marathon, where it kept runners hydrated entirely waste-free. Other examples of their capsules include cocktails, perfect for exclusive evening events, and sauce sachets for takeaway and delivery services. The Notpla liner coats cardboard serving boxes in a hydrophobic and oleophobic layer to keep food fresh, and to help the compostability or recyclability of the packaging after use. No matter what its intended use, most plastic finds its way into the watercourse, which ends up in the oceans. Although aluminium is better for the environment than plastic, beer cans are held together with one of the most dangerous plastics that threaten our sea life. Six-pack rings have been pictured suffocating sea creatures and have even been found in the stomachs of large sea mammals. Florida-based Saltwater Brewery thought it was time to change this and combined barley with wheat ribbons, a byproduct of the brewing process, to create 100% biodegradable and edible six-pack rings. Furthermore, in a matter of just hours after finding its way into the sea, this packaging will begin to break down by itself. Saltwater Brewery aims to produce almost half a million of these each month and hopes that more established companies will follow its example. But in the meantime, and while plastic still plagues our world, remember to cut open any six-pack rings you may be throwing away, so that, if they do unfortunately end up in the oceans, at least they don't pose a choking hazard to any wildlife. Yet again, another brewery is at the forefront of planet-saving technologies. New Zealand-based DB Breweries has installed bottle crushers that break down its glass bottles into very fine powder. Each bottle creates 200 grams of powder, which itself is a form of sand substitute. Up to 9 in 10 beaches are eroding due to the construction industry's greed for the ocean's sands, but the Kiwi firm hopes to change this with its glass sand alternative. Taking bottles out of landfill, the company will sell its powdery substance to construction firms which will use it in the making of things like cement and brickwork, and even some road surfaces. 
The bottle's label is automatically removed using a suction system before miniature steel hammers break away at the glass, a process that takes a staggering five seconds. Particles will measure 0.4 to 1.1 millimeters and will be screened and filtered by size for different uses. It's said that the US alone discards 40 billion pieces of plastic cutlery each year. That's more than 120 pieces per person. Indian cutlery company Bakey's has broken the trend and thinks it has found the solution to our plastic habits. These vegan forks, knives and spoons are consumable and are primarily manufactured from sorghum, which is what is known as an ancient grain. Blended with rice and wheat, this new cutlery trend comes in three flavours. Plain, sweet and savoury, a mix of salt and cumin. Sorghum is a particularly good choice of grain because it remains hard when it encounters liquid, making it perfect for soups and sauces, and it can be grown in areas that receive little rainfall. Various crowdfunding campaigns have seen it raise tens of thousands of dollars, allowing the company to sell spoons for about two rupees, twice the price of plastic spoons, but half the price of wooden spoons. Decomposition begins naturally in just a few days if the cutlery isn't eaten. It's not just the packaging that contains our food, but our food itself. Much of the food we find in our supermarkets has been imported, carrying with it huge air miles. Supporting local farmers is one way, but for many city dwellers this simply isn't an option. To grow our own produce would be amazing, but with the price per square foot at an all-time high, it's difficult to know where to start. Many small crops can be grown at home on what's known as a vertical garden. A concept that first started as a wall of parts has become a whole industry. Aiming to reconnect us with the growing process, Terra Planter is a plant pot reimagined. A vertical body of water is contained within a honeycomb clay design which allows roots to grasp on. Thanks to its porous nature, water seeps through to feed the plant's growth, while many species are suitable to be grown from seed, including microgreens. These are expected to retail for $80, but are currently available on crowdfunding platforms for significant discounts. Singapore Food Agency created history when, this year, it gave approval to lab-grown meat. Also known as cultured meat, the aim is to reduce not only the amount of livestock killed for meat, but also provide a drug-free industry. Currently, estimates place 60% of the world's mammals by weight as livestock for slaughter, while 36% are humans. Only 4% of the world's mammals are classed as wild animals. A 1,200-litre bioreactor houses the cells which are combined with plant-based ingredients to form a meat hybrid. Future challenges involve passing various regulatory stages across the world before rolling out lab-grown meat on a consumable scale. One report predicts that in just two decades, the majority of the meat we eat will in fact not come from dead animals, but from laboratories or plant-based alternatives. With one in seven people currently making a living in the livestock industry, this could have a huge impact economically. But one question remains. Will lab-grown meat be classed as vegetarian or even vegan? Currently, this is unlikely, because cells are being taken from live animals to begin the process. We've dealt with the food side of things, but before a greasy kebab or some french fries or a pizza comes a good night out. Cities are homes to thousands of nightclubs, in which hundreds of people can be found enjoying themselves. Or at least this was the case prior to the pandemic. But what if all this wasted energy could be put to good use? Dance to Save the World lights up the dance floor at London's Surya nightclub. Quartz crystals and ceramics form the basis of this high-tech dance floor which turns kinetic energy into electricity. Enough, in fact, to power almost two-thirds of the club's requirements, making it well on the way to being carbon net zero. The club also has its own wind turbine and solar system, while entry to the club is an appealing £10, which is reduced to zero for people who sign a pledge to reduce their energy consumption. Drinks are served in polycarbon cups, while minimal water is used in the toilets. A night out is not complete without the latest fashion accessories. The idea came about when leather was observed to be environmentally unsustainable and often poor quality in the Philippines. And years later, a joint venture between the Royal College of Art in London and a university in North Wales resulted in the creation of Pinatex. The long fibres from pineapple leaves come together with polylactic acid and petroleum-based resins to create an artificial leather that is softer and more pliable than other alternatives. Currently, the material is not biodegradable due to its plastic components, but it's a huge leap forward from the traditional use of cowhide and a sign of what's to come. Almost 500 pineapple leaves are required for just one square metre of the fabric, but with the pineapple industry wasting 40,000 tonnes of leaves each year, it means rotting them or burning them isn't the only option. Wherever possible, reduce, reuse and recycle. But in looking for something new, why not give one of these planet-saving initiatives a try? 